Today, it's Blake Reed Evans. He's a stylist, a hair color specialist, a social media expert, a salon owner at Sheer Art Salons in Tampa, Florida, now known as Champa, Florida, for all the championships they're winning down in Tampa. Thank you, Tom Brady. He's a, a really unique teacher, as you're learning with him here on our channel on a regular basis. He's actually our first educator, our first ambassador to appear on all four of our weekly channels. Today makes the fourth of the four Mannequin Mondays, Transformation Tuesdays, Wellness Wednesdays, our, our Instagram broadcasts. He'll be the first to sweep all four today. We're so excited to have him here. Are you ready to do it, my friend? What's up, Kerr? And hi, everybody. Uh, Blake, I, I really sort of have to make a deal out of the fact that you're our first ambassador to sweep the, the weekly series. It's, it's a great honor. Congrats to you, sir. Oh, thank you so much. No, I'm so honored to be here. Um, the San Via community um, is something that I've been a part of my entire career. So it's an honor to be able to give back to the community through some education. Shall we do it? Let's get to it. So, um, you know, how many of us have ever been in the situation where you're taking a look at someone's haircut and you take a look at the haircut and you're like, it's almost good, but it's kind of like bulging out on the side. Go ahead and give us some hearts in the chat if you've been there before, because I know that when I take a look at some haircuts, I'm like, it's good. It's not my favorite. Um, so what we're going to do through here is we're going to take you through um, short, medium, and long hair and share with you some ways that you can do some internal layering. You know, think about ways that you can extract weight within your client's hair um, and be able to replicate it time and time again. Now, I'm gonna share with you that this is my very first haircutting class ever, ever. Um, I love cutting hair behind the chair, but in terms of education, I turned myself towards um, doing color and social media more often. Um, so I'm really excited to be here with all of you to, to share some cutting stuff um, and some of the approach. So a lot of the stuff that I do in the salon is um, a lot of dry cutting. So I'm gonna share with you some tips and tricks on how to collapse weight within the hair. So we're gonna get off started off with some shorter hair and you can see that there is just like a little bit of heaviness as you find in the side of this silhouette here. So what we're gonna do is we're going to collapse it. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna come through and we're gonna use the wide side of our comb and we're gonna be able to use this tip here, this hook that's gonna be able to help get us control over the areas that we are going to be cutting. Now in everyone's hair is going to be different. So I'm very visual whenever I'm deciding how much weight I'm going to be extracting from the hair. So for some clients, their hair might be so dense, we might take our cutout section really, really high. Reason why we're not doing that on this mannequin is if you see, if we hold our hands over, it might be a little too much hair to come off. I'm gonna show you with some paper. So you can see that if I take that section up too high, it might be a little too much. So what I'm gonna do in this situation is I'm gonna actually come through using that hook right there. And I'm actually gonna drop down where I'm gonna take my cutout. Now I'm working with a curved line. I find um, a lot of the time the curved lines leave everything like soft and easy to work with. And then of course, um, my favorite clip on earth because it doesn't leave dents in the hair. So this is the section we're gonna be working with. And then let's go and show you how much hair is going to be left behind. Awesome. Yeah, I love seeing all of you guys in there. Katie, I love dry cutting so much. Hi, Sonia. Hi, Simone. Yeah, Tam we're officially Champa Bay, Kurt. You know, it's um, it's very exciting. And you're right, Tom Brady was the one to help. So we can see now the section that we're dropping off here is going to be our security blanket. Because I know that if I eliminate all this hair underneath here, I have all of this length to help me. So I'm going to go back in and I'm going to clip that up out of the way. The first year I'm gonna be working with to help collapse the weight on the hair is the um, reversible blending shear. So what I love about the shear is that it really takes a lot of weight out all at once. So this shear itself is really great 
because of how much weight it takes out. So I'm going to show you here. It's going to take a lot of length and weight at the same time within this area. So let's get, get this to you one more time so you can see it really takes a lot of weight out at once. So if you've ever been there like cutting um, and removing hair and you feel like it's taking um, a long time, invest in one of these shears because you'll see how much length comes off all at once. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take this section of hair on the side. I'm using the wide tooth side for this particular section just to get loose tension. And I'm going to elevate up. And then what I'm going to do is angle this at a diagonal, and then I'm going to come in and go back and forth to help remove weight. So yes, this is a blending shear, but these shears are, are nice and strong enough that you're actually able to have the opportunity to take some length off of the hair, and we can collapse this a little bit closer to the head form. We're going to come through on this side, and I'm going to use the finer tooth side of this, and I'm going to come through and go back and forth. The reason why is I just wanted a little bit more tension with this shorter hair by using the um, finer tooth side of it. So we're going to come in, and now we can see where we're collapsing that shape in a little bit more. So I love that. And then now we're going to come through on the back corner right behind the ear where we get a lot of weight as well. So we're going to actually come in. Take that fine tooth side again, elevate it up. And then we're going to come back and forth. So the reason why we go back and forth is it's going to help take the length off a little bit quicker, but it's going to leave it soft and diffuse. So you can get a closer up look of the weight that we're able to extract. Now look at the difference. We're going to comb this back down into place. And you can see now this shape is living closer to the head than it was before. So I want you to not even just think about just bowl cuts, but think about um, pixie haircuts. Think about your guests that have a high density amount of hair and you're able to collapse the shape in on the sides by taking little cutouts. Um, important consultation questions though is to make sure that your guest is comfortable with you um, doing that. And you just tell them in a problem solution format, like problem, um, you know, you have, you keep complaining about bulkiness on the sides, solution is to do some cutouts. But what I want to make sure that we do is we um, send them home with a paddle brush and then also a um, heat resistant comb so that they can blow dry it. Because when they're working in these areas, a brush might not be enough. So you want to use a comb to be able to have, um, to be able to style it. Um, and I see yeah, we have a really great question um, from Triv. How close do you uh, get to the head? So that is a really great question, Triv. Thank you so much. So when you're taking your sections, it's all based on the personality of your client. You can take it, let's go ahead and get some of that hair out. You can take it as tight as you need it to. So I have clients that I'll take it all the way up to finger length. We'll take a little bit more off so you can see it, Trip. And what's great about it is because we're doing horizontal layering, this is this hair is going to be shorter, shortest at the top, and then longer on the bottom. So you're actually maintaining length while collapsing weight because all this hair is just so short underneath. Um, but Triv, sometimes I have clients that I'll go in and I'll do a scissor over comb. So I'll come in with my shear and I have no problem getting in there and taking it really nice and tight depending on the style of the haircut that they are going for. Yeah, Sonia, we are missing Andrew today. Um, he has the day off from today, but he'll be back on Wednesday for Wellness Wednesday. Um, but thanks for being here, Sonia. So then what I love to do too is just some detailing is to take my shear and just cut around the ear. The um, blade is resting on the hairline to make sure that you're not cutting them. And then you're just point cutting to create more diffusion around the ear. So that's what we have for you for shorter hair. So this is where we're able to create that collapsing effect on the haircut. So you can see the difference now. This is the side that we didn't cut. And you can see where this is living off the head a little bit more than on this side, which is a little bit 
sleeker. Um, all this color was done with actually Redken Shades EQ. I took, um, like for these green bits, I took the pastel green and added yellow kicker to it just to help give it a pastel um, neon-y type green feel to it. Awesome. What's up, Olivia from Twin City Beauty College? I love it. Okay, cool. Now what we're going to do is we're going to remove some weight in the back of a bob. And let's go ahead. My model's a little too tall for me, so I'm going to bring him down a little bit. Where <laughs> I love that. Where were you whenever I did that style last week? Well, I'm here now um, so that, that we can use this again. Um, so thank you, Annette, for this question. Can you talk about what reversing blade does? So what's really great about this is that it has so many teeth on it that it can help extract weight for you. So think thinning shears is, is the term that you would use for it. The reason why we call it reversible blending is because it has these tangs on the end where you can flip it so you, you can control which way the weight is being extracted. So actually, thank you so much enough for bringing that up because when I was working with the shear on the shorter haircut, the teeth were pointing down. So when the teeth are pointing down, that's gonna help guide the hair pointing down. So if you ever have challenges, I don't care if it's a barber haircut or a short, uh, just a short sheer cut, this, these teeth are going to help push the hair down whenever you're using it to help remove weight at the same time of removing length at the same time of creating texture within the hair. So I hope that that was um, helpful for you. So I love these shears. I can't function without them in the salon. Um, and I use them all the time, particularly within shorter hair cuts. Now, um, give us some more hearts in the chat if you've ever been in the situation where you've used a texturizing shear on someone and it left marks and dents in their hair. Because if if I, I can't be the only one that's had this happen to them, right? So you go in, you texturize someone's hair, and then you end up leaving lines in someone's hair hair. Um, so <laughs> I, I can see that other people have been there as well. So what we're going to do is we're going to help remove weight out of the back of a bob um, using a different type of shear. So you can see it's pretty heavy at this current moment. So we're going to come in and we're going to extract weight out of it. And we're going to give it like a soft, blunt cut look so not as blunt as this we're going to help soften the edge a little bit so the way that we're going to be able to do this is we're going to be taking a horizontal line from ear to ear working within the occipital area of the hair we're going to go in and clip it up on one side this hair is like perfectly slick and slippery so i'm going to put another clip up there for um, help. So you can see how blunt this line that we're working with. So um, now we are going to come in with our invisible end shears. Now this shear is so different than the reversible blenders because the cutting happens on the inside of the convex blade. So I'm not cutting myself here. This is actually um, softened out so that when the hair cutting, it happens on the inside of these blades. So I'm going to show you with the black paper behind it. So you can see that there's 23 convex blades on the inside of this, um, Japanese steel, of course, and the cutting happens on the inside of this. So if you get really close, you can see where it has a curved U shape to it. So for me, as someone who works on a lot of blondes and a lot of fine hair blondes, this is my go-to shear if I need to texturize them. So um, let's go ahead and show you how soft this is whenever you go to take weight out of the hair. So you can see that it removes weight, but it's not going to be as much as the other texturizing shear. So there's a time and place for all of the shears that we are working with. So we have the reversible blender here and then the um, Invisiblends right here. So a lot more weight taken out versus this one. Also, this one has a little bit more of a line. This one has less of a line. The reason why is because of how many teeth there are on there and then also the way that each one cuts. The 
reversal or the reversible blender cuts on this blade on the bottom, the straight blade on the bottom. The Invisiblend cuts on the inside of these convex blades. So I hope that that helps. And then to go back to our question about what is the difference um, teeth up versus teeth down. So teeth down will help push the hair down. So if you have a bob that like flips out, let's go ahead and do it. If you have a bob that flips out, my friends, what we can do is the teeth are right here. We can take it, elevate it up a little bit, and then it's gonna help push the hair down. If you want the hair to flick up, then you can take the teeth and push it up. Um, it was a huge game changer for me in terms of texturizing hair. Was, to be honest, I was scared to texturize hair for so long because I just didn't fully understand it. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna take our Invisiblend shears and these invisible shears, you're going to see that it doesn't really take a ton of length off, but it'll help remove weight. So what I'm going to do is with this whole section of the hair, I'm going to lift up with a wide side of my cutting comb. So we're going to come in and I'm going to lift up and take out weight visually where I want it to go. Now, if What's really great about this is that there is little to no drag whenever you are working with these shears. So if you ever, um, I don't know, I've, I've definitely had the client that you go to do um, some texturizing to them and they're like, ow, ow, ow. And you're like, oh my gosh, I need to oil my shears. Um, these help help avoid that because of the way that they cut the hair. So you can see we're, we're getting some length off of the hair or the weight off the hair without taking a ton of length, but I can see that that baseline needs to be disrupted a little bit. So I'm gonna actually come in now with my finer side of my comb to help get that baseline. I'm not gonna elevate quite as much so that I can really get in there and help shatter that that baseline. What I like about this though, is if you're working on lightened or previously colored hair, it doesn't leave as many li um, lines in the hair because as a colorist, you have so many, um, you know, we're, we're doing a lot of blonding <laughs> in the past five, six years. So we really wanna make sure that we're preserving the integrity of the hair. And what I want you to see up close is look how sharp the ends still look. So they don't look like they're feathered or weathered or worn out too much, but you're able to start softening that bob itself. So we're gonna come through and elevate up. And I'm such a visual person. Uh, to be honest, this is why I stayed away from teaching cutting for so long, is because when I'm cutting, I'm taking into consideration the principles, right? Like um, I'm elevating the hair right now. So there's gonna be some layers created with it. I know that I'm working within the nape of the hair. So I know that this hair is more stationary. It's gonna lay closer and flatter to the head. I'm, I'm keeping in, the, in my mind, but I'm also more visual whenever I'm cutting because I just want it to feel right. So as I'm working with my clients too, I, I'm saying like, go ahead, feel that. How does that feel for you? Is that good? Do you want a little bit more? Um, and it just depends on on what they, they say is what we're gonna do. I feel like on this mannequin, I can take it down a little bit more. So I'm actually gonna break it out. Um, my favorite shear I've ever used in my entire career, um, and it is the seven inch dry cutting swivel um, iron, uh, or I mean, I'm shear. And I just love the shear so much. Um, I love this because it swivels. So as a hairstylist, like as I'm moving and cutting hair, the shear will move with me so that I don't have to move my elbow up in a weird direction. So I love it. And Chip saying they work with um, native hair, thick, and they ask every two months to thin it out and I, you don't like it. Yeah. So Trip, this is a really great way to be able to help um, remove weight in their hair um, without it being so harsh and so thinning to the ends. Um, but I promise we have another trick for you for longer hair where you can do some, some layering to it and it's going to help collapse weight for you without making the hair feel weird. So I love that. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna come in, we're gonna take even more weight out. So the seven inch dry cutting shear, I just want you to see seven inches. That means that I can go deep into the hair whenever you go to remove weight. 
Now, tips I've learned about weight removal, um, Becca Bradshaw, an amazing um, educator with Redken and also a SAMV ambassador, always talks about if you want expansion in the hair, you wanna make sure that you do the texturizing closer to the scalp. Um, in this case, we don't want expansion. We don't want volume, we want weight reduction. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna come through and take a vertical section and you can see where the ends are nice and thinned out already from the invisible in shear. And we're just gonna go in and we're cutting on our way out and it's very, very visual. So um, this is important for you to use your mirror whenever you're cutting in the salon. Um, right now I'm using the camera to, to show me exactly where I want that weight taken out. And then we're gonna come down. Vertical lines I know for sure collapse whenever we're, we're cutting the hair. And then we're gonna come through and elevate it up. So I love, I love that. And then uh, Kurt, I would love for you to come back and tell us about like how the Invisiblins come. Do they come in lefties? Um, what are our options there? Hi, Blake. Yeah, that's a, a very good question. Good, And the great answer is yes, they come in lefties. All okay. our shears come in lefties. Yeah, I love it. And I love that it's it's a true lefty shear from, based on my experience too, because um, I know Sam um, is left-handed and he's able to do a lot with his right hand, but also does a lot with his left hand as well. So that's really awesome. So now you can see where we're starting to soften out that line ever so slightly. And then we're gonna take a little bit more hair on the side here and we're going to extract some weight. So again, it's all visual. So what I what I typically do is I'll have my guests um, come in with their hair styled kind of the way that they normally style it. Um, and ideally like blown out, um, flat ironed if they flat iron it. Um, and then I will cut their hair first because I find that if you train your guests, they'll do what you need them to do. So I'll have them cut first um, and then I'll go in and do color because as a colorist, I can't tell you how many times I've colored first and then cut, and then cut my balayage or vivid work <laughs> off of the hair. So you can see through here, we've collapsed this a little bit closer to the head form. And then now, when we drop this down, you have a little bit more movement out of that top layer because like I said before, this hair underneath here is stationary. The hair on top has a lot of movement. So even without touching, the outside of the bob, you can see that we're getting a lot of swing. Luis, I love that you do that too, because it's it. I found that it's a lot easier. I don't know who decided that we always have to color first then cut second, um, but I totally do a lot more cutting first and then color second. Now I'm gonna come in and I'm to protect my fingers, I'm just gonna use the wide side of the tooth, uh, the comb, and then I'm cutting on my way out just to help shatter that baseline a little bit. Um, this is just to help create a little bit more movement within the hair. And again, it's just all visual. Um, I used to be so obsessed with everything being so technical, 45 degree here, 15 degree there. And I like stressed myself out whenever I was doing that. And particularly um, when you're dealing with um, lightened hair, you know, you really want to make sure that you're being visual, that you're taking enough weight out, but you're not doing too much because when the hair's blonded, it already has like a textured effect to the hair. So it's just elevated up for softness because when you lift it up, it'll fall softer. And then you can see where we're getting a little bit more swing out of this bob. So I love this. Um, Luis, I'm in Tampa, Florida, so it's it's hot here now. Um, we're, we're in full-blown summer. It's um, exciting and also sad at the same time because I'm still a Midwest boy at heart and I like cooler temperatures once in a while. So I love this because we, I love the, the shear because it does so much work. I find when I'm cutting, I don't have to grip and cut at the hair as much um, whenever I'm working with it because of the length. This hair, the shear goes in so deep that I can remove the weight that I need to. The other thing too is that if you're doing, um, you know, like scissor over comb on a shorter haircut like mine, this shear covers so much of a head form whenever you're cutting that you don't have to g get in there with too many, um, too many other shears to be able to get the look that you're you're looking for. So we're going to come through here and soften up this line. Again, using the wide side to a side of the comb 
for less tension. And then we're just gonna elevate it up just for a little bit of softness. And then we're going to use our seven inch die cutting swivel shear to come out on the outside. And you can see where it softened it up. Cool, Michelle, I love that there are other people out there who's a visual cutter, because I'm the same way. I'm so technical um, in color. Like I could talk forever about the science of hair color. For whatever reason, the principles are floating in my brain um, when I'm cutting hair, but it is a lot more, more visual. Um, we should reduce density from nape only or top crown. Why vertically, not horizontally? Um, Sonia, that is a really great question. So whenever we're reducing weight in the nape, um, the goal here, Sonia, was to help remove weight for somebody without creating too many external layers, so meaning layers on top. So when you're dealing with um, medium length hair like this, I, I love that you brought this up because most of the time, if the, these people are tying their hair back, it's in a tiny little nub of a ponytail. So what you're able to do is go into the inside of the hair and create these internal layers so that they can actually go in and um, collapse the weight on the inside so that the layering and everything else happens on the inside. And then they can still have their blunt bob look without it looking like bulky or Christmas tree um, like. So I love I love all that questions. Um, and you're right, Tara, on YouTube, you said, you're saying it right too. It's like more instinctual. Um, you know, when I started, I when I went to hair school, I had never touched like a curling iron in my life. So I had no idea what I was doing. I spent the healthy first part of all of hair school, actually, I'm sorry, all of hair school, um, thinking, I didn't know that graduation and layers were the same thing, um, because those are the terms that we use to describe layering is graduation in school, and I had no idea. Um, so I just became very visual because like the words confused me. So I, I love that you're bringing that up. I want to bring this one into you, um, Blake, because you just <laughs> mentioned hair school, right? And how tough it is to yeah, learn totally. what's going on. So why don't we go ahead and help Rohit out? Yeah, Rohit, that's a, such a great question. So um, tension, what does it mean? So tension is um, how much you're pulling on the hair. So Rohit, in color, cutting, finishing, tension is how much you are pulling on the hair. So I've been working with my, um, my Sanvia comb here. There is a wide side and then there's a fine side. So when you think about it, because there's more gaps for the hair to pass through when you're cutting the hair or you're combing the hair, I mean, it's not going to pull in the hair as much versus if you're using the fine tooth side, it's going to pull the hair a little bit more so it's being held a little tighter. Because we're going for a lot more like softer, lived in um, type textures, I'm using more often than not the wide side of the comb so that it doesn't pull in the hair so much and so that it really um, takes the weight out, but it also leaves it very jagged on the inside of the hair so it's not so perfect. Um, so I really, I really love that. That's such a, that's such a great question, Rahi, because there are a lot of words out there that you're like, what are you even talking about? So, um, so that is the way that we can help collapse weight in the back of a bob, but you can see that it is still a blunt cut, but now it has just a little bit more move and swing to it. So that's that for you. So now we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna go from first start off with short, now we're gonna go medium. Now we're gonna go ahead and talk about doing some weight removal on some longer hair. So um, time permitting, we're gonna share with you the um, curtain bangs, but let's go ahead and get started with some weight removal in the back. So Tara, thank you so much. Yeah, air, airy is such a good word to describe it. I just love that um, description. Um, so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna help remove a lot of weight out of this mannequin. Right, right now, currently, it is just like one length, doesn't have a lot going on, like it has a nice wave in the side. Um, but what we're going to do is we're going to help remove weight in the hair. So think about your clients that are like, my ponytail is so thick. My hair just feels flat. And whenever I curl it, it doesn't have a lot of body to it. My hair takes a long time to, um, 
my hair takes a long time to blow dry. So all of those things, all of those complaints for our clients or our guests are a really great opportunity for us to talk about internal layering. So we have to make sure that we have an open conversation with them though about what it's gonna look like on the inside of their head. So what we're gonna do is we are going to take a section that is just right beneath the, the crown of the head here. And again, it's all going to be visual. So let's go ahead and take a section there. Let's go and curve that a little bit. We're gonna curve it down ever so slightly. The curve will help keep it soft. Let's curve it even more. Beautiful. So we're gonna go ahead and clip that up. and get that hair out of the way. And then now we're gonna come through and we are going to decide where we're gonna place this layering in the hair. The big thing I wanna make sure that I'm maintaining is length on the bottom and that it's not going to be too skinny. So what I imagine is if I took this and cut this, would it be too thin? So right now looking at this, the answer would be yes, it would be too much. So I'm actually gonna take this up a little bit higher. The big thing I've learned about visual cutting and like internal layering and doing all these things is um, section three times to make sure that it's right because I've one time ever um, did an internal layering technique on somebody and over layered their ends. And then it looked like they had no hair on their ends and they had so much hair whenever they arrived. So we're gonna come in, take a look at that. And then now we're gonna create a little square here to help create the layers. So now taking a look at this, I can probably shave off just a little bit more hair here just for a little bit of insurance. So visually, this looks good. Because now what we're gonna do is we're gonna eliminate a lot of this hair by creating a lot of layers. So as I'm doing this, I'm showing the client in the mirror. I have no problem giving them the mirror while I'm doing this. Because then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say, um, Lydia, what you need to understand is I'm taking this clip here and I'm clipping all of this hair out of the way. So please know that your hair will be still long and full and everything like that. But what I am going to help eliminate for you, Lydia, is all of this hair here so that you can have a lot more movement in your hair and you also have less hair to um, blow dry. Big tip. Thicker hair, thicker section. Skinnier hair, maybe your section is only an inch thick, but I found that this works really well. Then what I do is I just feel for the round of their head. And wherever the round of the head, that's as short as I wanna be able to take it. Um, Carol was asking, how about doing texturizing with curly hair? Um, Carol, this is a really great question. Um, I love that you have texture to your hair too. That's really amazing. Um, so what you can do is you can do a similar approach to this with curly hair because you can cut out little pockets of, of hair with this. Um, just big thing is like blunt cutting those ends as I'm sure you know um, that you need. Then what we're going to do is we're going to take a section that is about two inches wide and we're gonna bring this camera back up. And now I'm gonna use the fine side just to get a little bit more control of the section that I'm working on. I'm gonna see a uh, little too short and I'm going to lift this up even further. I'm coming in with my seven inch dry cutting shears and again, very softly and far away from my fingers and cutting on the way out, I'm removing the length now. So what this is gonna do is it's gonna come down and it's going to collapse and you can see that it leaves a little bit of length, but it's also collapsing to the head form. Now, if you're just joining us and you're like, what the heck is this kid doing? Please know that all this length is guaranteed right through here because we've built in our insurance. So now this works as our guide. He's no kid. He's Blake <laughs> Reed Evans. <laughs> Thanks, Kurt. I love it. I know I keep calling myself a kid, but I turned 30 in two months. So maybe it's time to retire that. Um, so now we're going to come in and you can see 
we're just coming in and cutting on our way out. My friend Becca Bradshaw taught me that so I don't cut my fingers anymore. And it's a really great way to help collapse weight in the hair. Then we're just gonna take it to the other side so that we can um, go through and remove some more weight. I would love to know, um, like what is everyone's Instagram names? Go ahead and drop them in the chat because I would love to connect with all of you on Instagram. My Instagram name is at Blake Reed Evans on there. And then of course, if you're not already, make sure that you're connecting with us on the Sam Via channel at Sam Via hair so that we make sure that we're all friends on there because to me the learning doesn't stop in classes like this it's an ongoing thing and the reason why i get out of bed in the morning is to teach professional hairdressers how to live their best life um, techniques like this can live your make you live your best life because you're not lifting your shoulders up as much to be able to cut hair um, the tools sam and the team has developed are just incredible to making sure that you are taking care of yourself so like i've been working with these swivel shears and it moves with me as I'm cutting so that I um, don't have to lift up my arms in weird directions as much. So um, we're gonna come through and lift it up and we're gonna have our final section. So the conversation you have with your guests is yes, you're gonna have shorter pieces on the inside of your hair. Your hair can still go into a ponytail, Lydia, don't worry. Um, but what I need you to understand is that when you go to blow dry your hair, you're gonna have less hair to blow dry. When you go to curl your hair, you're gonna grab on these sections, you're gonna curl it, and then now your hair is gonna have a lot more volume because those curls are gonna pop out and those shorter pieces are gonna get longer. So I love this. Um, so now we're gonna come through and we are going to comb the hair right into the hair that is beneath it. So you can see that the sections will just like melt right into the hair and uh, Julia, yes, those are definitely Sam Via shears. I'm using the seven inch dry cutting swivel shears. I love them. Oh, Becca's here, I'm so glad. Um, yeah, so it's a um, really great uh, tool to be able to help eliminate hair. I do a ton of dry cutting in the salon. So this is my number one shear. And then my number two shear is the um, Invisiblins because I work with a ton of blondes, it doesn't leave lines. And then my third favorite shear is, um, in terms of most used, is the reversible blenders. I use it for like those shorter haircuts um, or people with super dense hair that need weight removal. Why do we call this internal layering? The reason why we call it internal layering, friends, is because when you drop that hair over it, nobody has to know. So what your client can do is they can get their hair back into a ponytail, but do you see how that ponytail is skinnied out for them? So think about it. When you use thinning shears, whenever you're cutting someone's hair, you're, you're coming through and just say, I'm cutting this one single piece of hair with a thinning shear. I can't recreate that. I can't guarantee the next time that they come in for their haircut that um, I can grab that same piece of hair and thin it out. And in fact, um, I may not want to because it may be too much. So for our clients, like I saw someone that said they have clients that want their hair thinned out every two months. It's great because all you need to do is just go back in there and find where your layers end and begin, and then you can recreate this time and time again. So that's what this is all about, and you're able to help extract a lot of weight because as someone who specializes in blonding and balayage, most of my clients look like this. They have longer hair, they want a lot of dimension in their hair, um, but they complain about how thick their ponytail is, so this will help remove that weight, less hair to blow dry, and then when they curl the hair, you'll get a lot of expansion out of the hair. So um, I love that. Um, thank you so much, Marciela. That's uh, awesome. So um, with the time we have, um, I'm going to share with you a way to do um, curtain bangs um, because this is one of those things a lot of people are asking for in the salon. And go ahead and give us some hearts in the chat too um, if you are finding that people are wanting face framing layers or more layers than ever because I um, feel like every day I walk in the salon, there's more and more people um, asking because I've definitely um, have been in that been in that with my clients and the first time they, they asked for it, I was like, are you sure? Do you really want bangs? So um, what I'm gonna share with you is a way to be able to get um, curtain bangs that are going to 
lay flat for you. So we're going to get her tightened up. And when we are talking about it, we're going to get fringe that's going to help lay down. Now, our friend and fellow ambassador, fellow Redken artist, Manda Ziegelman, they are iconic with being able to get flicky bits in the hair. And, and if you don't follow Manda already, please make sure that you go do follow them. It is at Manda Ziegelman on, um, on Instagram. They are so amazing at being able to get flicky bits in the hair. Now, I find that sometimes it depends on the flavor of the guests. If they're a little bit more commercial, they may want a fringe that's going to help tuck under for them um, and that doesn't flick out and turn into a wave. So we're gonna share with you something to be able to get that for your, for your guests. So we're gonna get this mannequin back over here and we are gonna give this mannequin a curtain fringe. Big things I've learned with curtain fringes is to make sure that you are working with a center part. And then within the center part, you wanna make sure that you have the hair prepped and blown dry the way that they would normally style it. So I ask for the guests to literally grab their blow dryer, style it the way that they are going to style it, or I'll teach them how to style it. What I'll do is I'll take my blow dryer and then we'll take the fine suit side of the, the tooth. So he, this fine side is gonna help give more tension and you're gonna be able to blow dry the hair down in the opposite direction, down and in the direction again. And you're gonna be able to confuse the roots and be able to get um, getting control of this fringe area. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna measure out where the hair is gonna be. Every head is different. Um, and so what I've learned is to use the spine of my comb to find the hairline and then wherever the hair, the comb lifts off the head, that is a high point of the head that we're gonna be working with for the fringe area. If I go further back than that, I totally can, but it's not gonna fall as natural as if I choose to work with this section. If your guests have finer hair, it's all good. You can totally reach for hair in the fringe area to make sure you get the look that you want but they have to style it. There's no negotiating in the styling business. So for this one, we're gonna keep it within its natural fall. And then we're going to draw a line to the corner of the eyes. So we're gonna come through, corner of the eyes too much. And again, it's just all visual. Like if, if, your, if your client's head form says, take hair past the corner of the eyes, then do it. I, I, I fully believe in hair cutting, it's very visual. Um, and sometimes you need to take that into consideration whenever you're cutting your client's hair. Again, we're gonna come through, got the high point here. We're gonna come through and draw another line to the corner of the eye and use our clips to be able to section it out of the way. So now we've got the fringe area that we're going to be working with. So this is where we start having conversations. Autumn um, on YouTube is saying like, my sister wants them, um, but I'm not too confident on cutting them. I feel you because I don't know about you, Autumn, or all of you that are watching, but um, have you ever had a client ask for bangs or a fringe and then they come back the next time and they're like, I'm growing them out. <laughs> So I've totally been scared before too. Um, so I'm always like, let's make sure that you really want them. So what I do, um, Autumn, is I'll talk with my guests and I'll put them right in the mirror for this part and I'll say, okay, where's the shortest piece that you want it to be? Do you want it to be your lips? Do you want it to be your chin? Because I've had clients that have asked for curtain bangs and they just want a lot of layers around their face. So they'll say, well, I just want it around my chin and then to get longer from there. And I'm like, okay, cool. That's a curtain face frame, I guess. Um, but for it to be a true fringe, it can live anywhere uh, around um, above the eyebrows or it can go down to the nose, the lips, that's where it starts getting into more face framing area. So what I do is I'll measure. So um, why don't you tell me, where do you want me to cut this to? Do you want it to be like the nose, the lips, the corner, the middle of the eyes? I'll take the first one that, that we see in the chat to be the length of what we are going for. Um, because that is a really great opportunity for us to be interactive and you can all pick where, where it's going to be in terms of length. So we're gonna come in 
And I'll take the first one that we see, browse. Okay, perfect. Thank you, Heather. We're going to take it up to the browse. So you can see here, the browse is going to be right here. We're going to come in and I'm measuring exactly where I want it to be. I'm going to lift it up and then I'm going to slide about a quarter inch past where I was. So to give you a side angle of where I was, we're at the browse. I'm going to elevate for softness and then I'm going to slide a quarter inch past where we want it to be. And then I'm coming in with my seven inch dry to cutting shears to cut my guide for this. Cause I know that bangs are going to, or fringe is going to pop up um, with their texture and their hair. So we can come in through there and we can make it a little shorter if we want, but I know by the time I like curl it, it's gonna pop up. So I think we're gonna be good. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna use that as our guide. We're going to take a vertical section and we are going to lift off of the head form. Now, this is the key part that I want you all to pay attention to. I'm going to get out of the way. I'm over directing the section of the hair towards the center. So I'm, all that means is I'm just carrying the hair to the center. So that means that when the hair swoops over, or it's going to help it swoop over. Then I'm looking for my guide in the hair and it looks like I may have dropped it. Perfect. So we're looking for the guide in the hair. I can see it right there at the bottom. The key thing in this technique is to swish your comb forward. So what that means is you're gonna leave weight on top. If I were to take this and cut it out like this, the shorter hair would be on bottom, longer hair would be on top. Short would push long and then it would flip out. So we're gonna go ahead and take this up and we're gonna make sure that we leave the weight on top. So we're gonna go ahead and give that a cut, blunt cut it for the look. And then we are going to take another section of hair and we are going to over direct all of that towards the center. So we're gonna come in and again with our comb, so you can, can see you're able to come in and weight on top. So because I'm over directing, this hair over to the center, you're gonna get a little bit more weight and length in the opposite direction. So you can see that they're falling pretty straight. That's because the hair is um, flat ironed. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna cut from the front so you can get a different view of it. So we're gonna come in and over direct this hair. I'm using the fine side of the comb. And again, weight on top, cut. Pick up the rest of the hair, over direct, and then we are going to cut. So you can come through and push this off to the side, and then you can come in with your flat iron. So I'm just gonna come in with my sleeker iron to be able to see where the hair is at. Um, one thing I've learned that's really important to know is that cutting doesn't fix styling and styling doesn't fix cutting. So cutting doesn't fix styling and styling doesn't fix cutting. So before I go in and doing any refinements, I'm gonna come in with my flat iron and just gonna bevel it under just because of how straight that hair was to see if we're getting the effect that we are, that we are looking for. So we're gonna come in and create a bump to the ends of the hair and we're gonna get our iron turned on. There we go. <laughs> Turning it on would probably be um, would be helpful. As a colorist, I really love this iron because it has a color-treated setting, so it doesn't help push out the um, color in the hair. Ashley, Ashley Moriello has a class um, on Instagram on Thursday talking about heat styling for color-treated hair, um, and I hope you join her for that. She's an amazing ambassador. I've known her for years. Um, an amazing educator, so I'm excited for you to be able to see that. So we're just gonna go in and there we go. We're gonna get that bevel that, that we are looking for. So I can see on that side, we've got what we're looking for. And then I can see on the other side, let me move her to where you can see. We just need a little bit more hair to be honest. So I'm gonna come in and I'm gonna add a little bit more hair to this side so that we can get the frame that we are looking for. So we're gonna come in and again, this is where the dry cutting style comes into place. So we're gonna come in 
grab some more hair, and we're just gonna add that little bit more hair so it can have the effect that we are looking for. So if you notice, I'm not texturizing or doing anything to this um, fringe. The reason being is that I want the weight in the hair. The magic came from the hair being longer on top, shorter underneath, so that the longer hair can hold the shorter hair down. So we're gonna come in and bevel right through there and then you can give it a good finish. Um, this one, I'm just grabbing Next Day Air from L'Oreal Professional. Um, some of my other favorites are like Triple Dry 15 from Redken. You have a lot of different options for your products. And then you can drop the size down. Biggest thing that I've learned is to communicate with your guests that now that you have this fringe, you're going to want us to connect the dots. So now all we're gonna do is add a little bit more layering on the side. We're going to take this shorter hair on the fringe and then we're going to help go in and layer out that hair there. So we're gonna come in and all I'm doing is just lightly opening and closing my shear. Um, I'm not closing it completely. If you close it completely, you're gonna end up taking too much hair off and leaving a harder line. So we're gonna go through there. Still wanna see a little bit more come off. So I'm gonna come in and I'm actually gonna go a little bit more intense with a point cut just to take some length off. That's good. And then I'm going to slide cut and just tuck the shear down the hair. So you can see how this will help open up the face a little bit more. You're gonna get a little bit more layers out of it. And then we're gonna mirror it on the other side. So this is the magic of the swivel and the dry cutting shear. So you're gonna be able to come in, notice how my elbow is still dropped when I'm cutting and I'm able to keep my body nice and safe even though I'm cutting on the opposite side of the hair. And I'm gonna go through and remove some of the weight. And again, I'm probably just gonna snip some of that hair off. And again, elevating it for softness, but it really is all, all visual whenever we're doing it. And now we have some little curtain fringe for you. So here's a slightly longer version for our friends that picked um, nose and mouth. This is just curled um, a little bit for texture so you can see it here. And then we have a shorter version of it here. Um, so you can see the differences between the two. We're gonna go ahead and give this a good textured polish because now what I love about blunter haircuts is that when you put texture into it, it just makes it look like a texture spray into it, just makes it look more like lived in and natural. And then because I work on a ton of blondes, I'm gonna go through with Redken Oil for All and taking a little bit of this oil, they call it like an invisible oil, and I'm just gonna go through and hit the ends of the hair to make sure that there's some moisture happening through here. So this is our little curtain fringe that you have. Um, but just to, to recap everything that we did and want to make sure that you walk away with is don't be afraid to take sections out of the hair to be able to make sure that the hair collapses and leaves um, lives a little bit closer to the head form. So um, just be visual, see where the hair lives. In this one, we used our um, reversible blender shears um, with the teeth pointing down to make sure that the hair push down. Then we moved on to the back of this bob and we helped create a soft blunt cut by doing some texturizing on the inside of the hair utilizing our reversible blender shears. And what's great about these is that it's soft and dull here so all the cutting happens on the inside of the hair so that there's no lines left in the hair. And then we moved on to internal layering within this mannequin. And we took a section that's gonna help thin out the ponytail, collapse the amount of hair when blow drying. And then of course, last but not least, we finished with um, our curtain bangs. And I'll go through and refine some of these and I'll post it on Instagram a little bit later. And um, for those, I use my seven inch dry cutting shears, which is my number one favorite shear. So what I would love to know is go ahead and drop into the chat um, what your biggest takeaway was 
from today's session because um, in order to lock in your learning, you got to type it out. So we would love to know what your, your biggest takeaways were. Let's make sure that we're connected on Instagram. So again, my Instagram name is at Blake Reed Evans. And I'm also make sure you connect with us on Sam via hair on Instagram as well at Sam via hair. Um, but with all of that said, from the bottom of my heart, thank you so much for joining us. And if you're interested in any sort of social media class, I have a class that starts next week um, with Summit Salon Business Center. All you need to head is to the link in my bio. Um, and we're going to spend four weeks together talking about um, social media. But I want to invite all of you guys to come um, check us out. And if you have any questions, message me on Instagram. I want to say, Blake, I have two comments for you. And one I want to expand on your um, expertise in social media. First of all, everyone noticed how he used, he's an expert in social media of his many expansive talents. This is one of them I think you really want to pay attention to. He spent an hour with Andrew Carruthers earlier in the year, specifically on this topic that watch how he wove his social media story throughout that entire hour. He was inviting you to, to connect. He was doing things that all of us need to do to be successful. So I just want to give you that one for just the beautiful way you presented your social media expertise ever so indirectly. Thank That's you. That's how it worked, right? Yeah. Yeah. yeah I appreciate you know, it. Yeah. And Blake, before we let you go, I just have one more for you. Everybody, you know, he commented at the top of the hour. This is his first cutting class teaching live. And he's a Redken artist. He's a San Via ambassador. And what a job you did, dude. Thank you so much. I, I owe it all to um, Sam Via's training. I mean, Sammy's training all these years. I helped him with doing color and finishing backstage and just watching the master at work. Um, and I'm so honored to have been able to give back to the community with some haircutting because all the haircutting that I learned in my career came from the Sam Via um, community. So I'm just so excited to be able to do this. So thank you all for being here. <laughs> Well, it's been great having you again. Congratulations on sweeping all four of our weekly events. <laughs> Good for you. And I'll talk to you in the green room in just a little bit here.